What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Insomnia Talks. So today, I want to talk about something that most people really don't like talking about, uh, myself included. I really don't like this subject because of all the stigma that comes along with it, and I just feel like We need to talk a little bit more about it, though. Uh, I think the more we talk about this, the more that it will be open to discussion and the more people can actually get help. Now, what the hell am I talking about? I'm talking about depression, okay? Um, And I mean real depression, not, oh, I feel bad today. Not, Not that crap. No, that's not depression. That's, okay, I'm in a bad mood. There's a big difference between, all right, I'm in a bad mood and I'm depressed, And depression is (laughs) more savage than any of us could ever pretend to be. Um, It's, it's, it's insane. It really is. It's really hard for a lot of people. I mean, and the real issue is, again, is nobody wants to talk about it because of everything that goes along with it. And people don't want to be around people who are depressed. I mean, to be fair... I don't want to be around me when I'm depressed. So, but we need to talk about it. You know, we need to, we need to get it out there. We need to talk more about it. So I want to dive into it a little bit today and just kind of give you a personal perspective on these things. Um, It's not the easiest subject, but again, we need to talk about it. We really do. We really, really do because talking about it is going to be the only way to fix it. So, first off, before we get into anything else, um, again, as always, big shout out to Anchor for pushing this and distributing on several, several different platforms and whatnot. So, you know what? Actually, I'll tell you guys exactly what platforms you guys can find me on, okay? Of course, you can catch me at anchor.fm slash insomnia talks. Uh, You can catch me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Stitcher. All thanks to Anchor. And all ad-free as far as I know. By the way, if anyone is posting ads on any of my stuff, you guys should really let me know about that because that means they should be paying me. Anyway. So, depression. Well, first off, let's talk about what depression looks like, because everyone hears depression and they think of 2003, the emo kid crying in a corner. That's not what depression looks like. This is what depression looks like. I am what depression looks like. Your best friend sitting next to you with a smile on their face could be hiding some really messed up shit. They really could. Depression doesn't have any specific form. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't have a specific look. So that's another big part of it is why it's so hard to identify, I feel. And it it can get rough. It really can. Uh, Again, this is kind of a sorry if I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but it's it's not the easiest thing to talk about. And the past the past couple weeks have been really rough for me personally. Um I've got a son that I haven't seen in three years, so the holidays don't really bring me very much joy. Uh, In fact, they kind of do the exact opposite. They they make it really rough. They make it even harder to get through, and it kind of just really sucks sometimes. And Now, I say sucks, but that just doesn't cut it. It's like I want to sit in a dark room. I want to be left alone. I want to be away from everyone, and I don't even know why. Like, I know why after. I know why. I know what brought it on, and I see these things coming out, but for some reason, I just can't stop it from happening sometimes. So, you know, a big part of it, for me especially, and uh, anybody else going through this stuff, and I know somebody out there listening to this is going through this kind of stuff too, so please, please, If you need to reach out to somebody, reach out to somebody. If you want to send me an email just to get some shit off your chest, if you just need to talk to somebody or just have somebody hear what you're going through, please feel free. Email me, okay? 
insomniatalks at gmail.com. Hit me up, all right? I will read it. I promise you I will read it. I will read it live on the next podcast if you want me to. If you don't, then I won't, but I promise you I will read it. I will look into it, and I'll email you back if you don't want me to read it on the podcast or anything like that. If you don't want it put out there, I'll email you back. We can talk, okay? Uh, I deal with it. I know there's a lot of other people dealing with it, and I know somebody listening to this podcast right now either is dealing with it, has dealt with it, or will deal with it in the future. Uh, so a big part of this for me is is just a sense of loneliness and worthlessness, just feeling like no matter what you do, what you say, no matter how much you try to help somebody else, you still just feel empty. Like, it's like starving and you're shoving food down your throat. It's, it's, you're eating, you're 300 pounds, you're obese, but you feel completely empty. Like you haven't eaten in years. And it's, it's probably the worst thing that I've ever had to deal with. I mean, and I've dealt with tooth pain. I dealt with all the injuries that I got as a kid growing up because of doing stupid crap and jumping BMX bikes and skateboarding and all that stuff. And none of it, none of it compares. It all pales in comparison to what it feels like when you go into that, that, that just hole, I guess is really the best way I can describe it. It's, it's like a spiral that just keeps going down and down and further and further and further and the further down you go the more helpless you feel and the harder you think it's going to be to get back out of that hole and then on top of all of that for me especially there's like a self-hatred where I hate myself for seeing it coming and not being able to stop it and it's like I I've seen this happen over and over again I know what triggers these things for me? I know what what brings it up. I know what brings it on. And yet, sometimes there's just no avoiding it. There's nothing to do about it. And I end up hating myself for that because I am not the type of person. And I know there are so many people out there like this that they don't let things stop them. They don't let things slow them down. And they, they adapt to their situations and they make it work. And so when you do that, and for some reason you can't, you can't stop it and then you can't get out of it. You start to hate yourself for it, which just sends you deeper down that spiral. And it's, it's really rough. And again, this is just for me personally, and everybody deals with this kind of stuff differently. And some people deal with it and they can manage and some people deal with it. And it's the last time they ever do anything. And it's just, it's, I don't want anyone out there to hurt themselves. I don't want that at all. Uh, Please, again, send me an email. Don't hurt yourself, okay? If you need somebody to talk to, email me. Hit me up something, okay? Go on to YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. If you want to message me there, uh, I'm going to be setting up a Twitter and all of that fun stuff. So if you guys need to get a hold of me just to talk, and I know you don't know me, I don't know you, but sometimes it really is easier just to talk to somebody who you don't owe anything to. You don't owe an explanation. They don't owe you anything. They don't want anything. They don't need anything from you. You don't want or need anything from them except for that conversation. Sometimes it's just easier to talk to somebody that you're not close to. So if I can be that for you, please message me. Now, that being said, I do understand why people end it. I get it, and I used to hate it. I used to think it was the the most selfish thing that you could do, and I was one of those people that was like, how dare you commit suicide? How dare you do that? And then about 10 years ago, uh, I experienced something, and it just, it, it broke me. It really did. It, it broke me horribly. And it was like nothing I had ever been through before. And, you know, I was molested as a kid and and somehow pulled through that. And 
and didn't grow up going, well, this is my excuse and I'm going to dwell on that, you know, oh, well, this is why I am the way that I am. You know, I never wanted to let that affect me to the point that it would affect the rest of my life. So I thought if I could make it through that, then there's absolutely nothing that I shouldn't be able to get through, nothing that I shouldn't be able to deal with. And then a situation happened where an ex of mine got pregnant. You know, uh, this is like within the first week or two that we had gotten together, she had gotten pregnant, which, you know, looking back now, obviously should have been a red flag, but she got pregnant. Uh, don't worry, this doesn't end in the, the baby getting lost or anything like that. It doesn't end like that. Don't worry. Uh, in fact, uh, he's great. (laughs) He's nine actually now or will be this year but what really screwed me up was about four months into her pregnancy we split up and basically cut me off completely Uh, I went to the doctor's visit to let us know that we were having a boy and I lost my mind like in the, ha- I had, I'd never been that happy before. I, I didn't know. And I know that sounds so cliche coming from a parent that, oh, you found out you were having a kid and it was the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you in your life. Well, it was for me. I mean, for some parents, it might not be. But for me, it was the most exciting thing ever because I remember even when I was 12 years old telling my mom that what I wanted to be when I grew up was a good dad and a good husband. And that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. I know that sounds really weird. (laughs) But yes, ladies, there are guys out there who really do want to be great husbands and great dads and everything like that. We really do want that. So we do exist. Um, You just have to treat us right. And if you don't, well, that's why nice guys don't exist anymore. Because you treated us like shit for way too long and we got sick and tired of it. So... Getting back to the subject, sorry. Uh, We'll shorten this story up. Basically, what ends up happening is uh, we split up. We get back together after he's born, uh, during which time I was with someone else because I was young and dumb and thought that being with someone is what made people happy at the time. And really and truly, it did. I got into a great relationship after that actually but I had told her that I had a son on the way when I got into the relationship and that if his mother wanted to work things out at any point in time that I would absolutely go do that because again I wanted to be a dad I wanted to be a husband I wanted to be all that uh and that day came well I got to know him I got to spend time with him. Uh, he, I was the daddy in his life. Uh, and then all of it was ripped away again. And come to find out, not mine. It was her ex's. It just so happens that we happen to look a lot alike. So wasn't really difficult to play it off as my kid. And it crushed me. It really did. It crushed me because it was like everything I've ever wanted has finally kind of come true for me. And then it was all a lie. And it dropped me really low. And when I say really low, I mean like I was 23 years old and I was waking up every morning and grabbing a bottle of Jack Daniels and and drinking that for like three months. And I got real low because of that. And it really, really fucked me up. And that was the first time that I think the depression really kicked in. Like, I had been sad before. Like, really upset and really sad before. But I had never been confused about why I was so messed up. And I just couldn't couldn't figure it out. And for someone like me who really enjoys, like, solving problems and fixing things to not be able to fix something in my own life was like 
the ultimate bitch slap. It was just like, yeah, you're not going to fix this one. Sorry, sucks to be you. And it's like mental herpes. That's that's the that's one of the best ways. I'm sorry, I just thought of this, and that might be one of the best ways that I can describe depression. You stress out, and it flares up. It's it's freaking mental herpes. That's what depression is. It's mental herpes, and you have it forever, and it pops up at the most inconvenient times. There we go. Yeah, there we go. See that, people? Depression is mental herpes. That's that's my definition of depression. Mental herpes. All right. There you go. But it really is just a never ending struggle. Okay. You have your good days and people think you're okay. So they ignore, oh, you can't be depressed. Look at you. You're happy today. Yeah, I can be happy. Okay. I don't, I don't have to just because shut up phone, just because I'm I deal with bouts of depression and it it can swallow me up. And sometimes it's a few hours. Sometimes it's days. I've had it as long as weeks where I just, I couldn't do anything. I lost like, I lost a lot of weight. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything and I didn't want to be around anybody. And, and again, I couldn't understand how to get myself out of that. And it was really, really hard because everyone around me that was, that I counted on just kind of disappeared. And I got real low. I got real low. Like, hey, I got a street right outside my house where buses drive by very quickly. All it would take would be sticking my head out at the right time and they'd never be able to stop and it would probably be all over. But I just can't do that. I can't do that. Um, I, I, I really can't. If you guys ever hear that I committed suicide, look into it. I didn't do it. I did not commit suicide. Okay. Believe me. I have had plenty of moments and times in my life where I've been that low, where those thoughts have crossed my mind. They didn't just cross my mind. They were like, yeah, all it's going to take is a second. It's only going to take a second. You You probably won't even feel anything, dude. And it'll be all over. No more pain, no more suffering, no more bullshit. But no more happiness either. No more joy, no more. And at the time, my my other, I say my other, but my son had been born. And so I couldn't do it. I, I could not do it. There was absolutely just the minute that my son was born. And yeah, mine, 100% mine. Uh. The minute he was born, it was like, oh, it's game over. There's, there's no, there's no doing that. There's just, it, it just isn't going to happen. It can't happen now. You can't do that because you now have responsibility that outweighs anything and everything else. And now I have my daughter too, you know, so it's just not in the cards to just say, well, I'm not doing this anymore. It, it just isn't there for me. And I hope it never is. Because it really is a never-ending struggle. You, you win battles. But the war keeps going on, basically. I think that's just really what I'm trying to say here. Is you can win these battles and, and you can win these fights and stuff like that. But the war never really ends. And it, it just... It's crazy. It's like I said with, you know, you get into that funk and then you start hating yourself and then you you do all this other stuff. And, and you know, it's just that vicious circle and, and vicious circle over and over and over again, spiraling downward, downward, downward. And it feels like something that you're never going to be able to get out of. But that's not the case. That is not the case because it does go away. It does stop eventually. And this is why I don't mind being around people when they're depressed. Because, again, I've been there. And I know what it takes to fight through that shit. And I know how hard that fight can be. But that fight is worth it. That fight is worth it. And 
if you're not sure if that fight is worth it or not, then, whoo, sorry, I am, <laughs> ah, YouTube can see this a little bit, yeah, I am getting a little teary-eyed, this is not the easiest thing for me to talk about, but, if you really don't think that fight's worth it, then come back, listen to this podcast, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not asking you to do this so that I can get another play or another download or anything like that. That is not what this one's about, okay? I would really love it if this was the biggest one that I've done yet, simply because I know that it's people that are dealing with this kind of shit that are going to be listening to this one over and over and over again. And to those people, I want to say, I give a shit. I know you don't know me and I don't know you, but I give a shit about you. I really do. Because I've been there. I'm still there. Damn it, this was not supposed to be like an emotional thing. <sighs> yeah, not <laughs> not the easiest one for me to do right now, guys. But I set a goal that I was going to do two podcasts a year, or two podcasts a year. Yeah, that'll happen. Uh, two podcasts a week, <laughs> because I really wanted to up this. This is part of how I deal with this. Uh, this is part of how I get through the day. It's it's coming up with these things and, and wanting to talk to people about them and things like that. So this is part of the reason why I started this podcast. One was, the biggest one was mostly out of boredom, and I really just wanted something to do with my time, and... I talk way too much, <laughs> so it seemed it seemed like a good idea to do a podcast because uh, I talk too damn much, and funnier than that is about two, three weeks after I started this podcast, my boss looked at me and he goes, you know, James, you should have your own damn talk show, and I'm like, well, I kind of do, I was like, I have this podcast, so, but I didn't tell him what it was, because... There's a really good possibility I could talk some shit about him on here one day and I don't want him to hear it and be like, well, you're fired now, asshole. And I'd be like, look, man, what I said in that moment was what I meant in that specific moment. It's not how I feel 100% of the time. It's what I felt in that moment. And that's kind of the same thing with depression. Sometimes you just feel it in that moment and it, it, it rips you to pieces. But that doesn't mean that it lasts forever. So, again, if you just need someone to talk to, because that's how we deal with this right now. Until there are better ways, until pot's legal, pot is a great option if you can get it and you aren't going to go to jail for it. It's, I recommend it. I really do. Uh, I don't recommend you break the law, but I would recommend that. If it's a viable option for you, and I'm not saying that it's going to help everybody, because as a supporter of legalizing marijuana, I don't believe that it's right for everyone. Don't ever be mistaken in that. I truly believe that it does help the better portion of people that use it, though. And I don't get it. I can smoke a brown plant that'll kill me. But I can't smoke a green one that could potentially save me from hurting myself. Which, again, I'm not going to do. Don't I don't want anybody getting worried. Again, I have too much to hold on to to do anything stupid. So it's just not going to happen. Don't freak out. Don't worry. You don't have to call the cops. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Calm down, people. And if I did do something, how would I be here for you? How would I be here to read your emails? How would I be here to do all that kind of stuff? Oh my God, phone, shut up. Hmm. Bad notifications. That's what that is. That's not, by the way, yeah, hold on. Let's see here. What, what, what? what? Anybody actually trying to hit me up? Nope. Nope. No one. That's just emails I got going off. Oh, wow. That's funny. Okay. Funny and creepy. I want you guys to hear what this this uh, email is. Because it just came in just as I was talking about this. And I find that to be just a little bit creepy. 
So the subject is, can a Bliss CVD relieve anxiety, reduce blood sugar levels? Huh. What was I just talking about again? Oh, yeah. Now, CBD is different from pot, okay? It is. CBD does not get you high. It's legal in all 50 states. It's great for anxiety. It's great for uh, joint pain and all that kind of stuff. Although people never listen to me about it when I tell them. They just wait a year till somebody else tells them and then they agree with it. And I'm like, you know, I kind of want to punch you in the face. God. So, yeah, if you can, I would. I would. I'm not advocating that you break the law. And that's what I mean by if you can. If you can legally obtain weed, I definitely recommend it. If you can't legally obtain it, obtain at your own risk. Uh, outside of that, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do as far as the green goes. And that's not to say that that pharmaceutical companies don't have products that work. That's not to say that pills don't work for people and everything. So... I'm not suggesting that if you're on medication and it does, in fact, help you. I'm not suggesting stop that. Please don't, okay? You know about that dark spiral. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, and if you've got something that works for you, please keep using it, okay? If they'd ever given me anything that would work for me other than turn me into a zombie or make me feel worse, then I would be on that. But they don't, and I don't like medication period I really don't uh I didn't take an Advil till I was 16 and I had to crush it up and put it in a drink because I refused to swallow a pill because for some reason I can't swallow pills now I can or I, I should say I couldn't swallow pills now I can uh but I still hate it I still gag on them even when they're tiny I I just I hate taking medication I I can't stand it anytime I have to take antibiotics even because yeah it just sucks so so uh, any assholes in the FBI, NSA, or anybody else, could you guys please hurry up and just legalize marijuana and get the hell over yourselves, you bunch of dicks? How about this? Here's a great idea. Uh, we're capitalist. Legalize it and make some fucking money off of it, you dummies. God, you guys are dicks. All because what? Why? Why? Because you want people to stay on pills that don't fucking work? While you strip away their fucking insurance? That's brilliant. No wonder people are going down the street to talk to the local pharmacist. Local pharmacist in quotes for anybody listening to this on Anchor. So, outside of staying on the medication, if it's working for you, or talking to your doctor, or just even just talking to someone that you can talk to. I mean, if you find somebody who you can really sit down and have a very serious conversation with about this, then I highly recommend doing it. Even if you just have to look at them and go, look, I'm depressed. I've been dealing with this for a long time now, and I don't know what to do about it, but I need to tell somebody. So do that. Do it. And it's going to suck, and it's going to be hard. But if I can get on here in front of a camera and on Anchor and post this as a podcast telling you guys about this, then believe me, you can talk to your friends about it. And if you can't, send me an email. If you need that email again, it's insomniatalks at gmail.com. Talks with an X. So, you know, uh, my brother got me writing songs again. Uh, I hadn't seen him in a couple years, and to be completely honest, I've pretty much hated him for the past couple of years. Uh, just personal stuff. I don't want to get into it because I'm not going to throw his and ours, his and my business out there like that. Uh, I don't want to do that. Maybe at some point I'll get him on the podcast and maybe we can talk through it, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do that because I don't want to make him out to be like a piece of shit because he's not, he's done some shitty things. But overall, he's not a piece of shit, and I don't want him to come off like that, so I don't want this to be a one-sided thing. Uh, but more importantly, you know, he runs, as I mentioned on the last one, he runs his Twitch stream, uh, and he asked me to do an intro for him. Well, 
that pushed me to then start writing lyrics again. And I actually did an entire song the other day, and I haven't done an original song in probably a decade. So I was really nervous about it, and it's not the greatest by any means. I'm not going to pretend like, oh yeah, I'm making money with that one. That's not the case. Um, but I did start writing again, and it really, it really feels good to start writing again. And, you know, that's kind of an outlet that kept me sane for a long time. And so I'm glad to be doing it again. It, it, it's just a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. And if you guys do want to listen to it, actually, go check it out on YouTube. YouTube.com Insomnia Talks. Hit me up. Okay, the song is called The Savage Inside Me. Um, I... Uh, I really enjoy writing again, and I kind of was sitting down this morning, and I was trying to go over what I wanted to do tonight with this podcast, and I was like, you know what, let's just get brutally honest, let's just break it down, let's talk about some shit that's a little more personal, and and kind of let you guys in my head a little bit, so as cheesy as this is going to be, I'm going to end the podcast with this, but I kind of wrote some more lyrics that might turn into a song later on. Um, and I, I think they kind of, I think it's kind of fitting for this subject. So if you guys are still here and still listening, I would like to read it to you guys. Uh, so again, this is, this is just random. This was something I wrote in like two minutes this morning and I don't know if it's ever going to become a song. It could just stay like this on on my notepad and, and never go anywhere else with it. But so that's why I figure, hey, why not put it out there? And who knows? I mean, maybe you guys will like it and get back to me and go, dude, turn that into a song. So, I mean, or dude, never write another song again. <laughs> See, even depressed people can fucking laugh. But OK. So this was basically just kind of me describing depression in in song form so to speak but i'll quit being a little bitch and i'll just read it to you guys so it's like a pit in my throat blocking the air like i'm reaching out my hand but there's nobody there feels like i'm dying inside and nobody cares how could you understand or begin to comprehend when i needed you most you just bailed in the end but it's not your fault and you shouldn't have to deal so this time I'm gone, and yes, it's for real. Now, I know that last lyric might sound kind of messed up. Um, but again, I don't, I don't want you guys to worry about me. I'm good. I'm good. I deal with it, and I fight through it, and I'm good, okay? But for anybody else out there who is not doing so good, you don't have to talk to me about it. You don't have to email me. Don't have to listen to this podcast again. You don't have to subscribe on my YouTube. You don't even have to go check out my YouTube. What I want you to do is just go tell somebody. Go tell anybody. Anybody. Just once you can tell one person, it makes it a lot easier to tell somebody else. And even if one can't help, maybe someone else can. And maybe, just maybe, You've got way more support than you ever knew you did. So with that, I would like to end this podcast and just say one last time that I give a shit. And if you need to talk, insomniatalks at gmail.com, youtube.com slash insomniatalks. I'll let you guys know when I have my Twitter and everything up and running because I've really wanted to stay away from social media, especially Twitter. Ah. But I give a damn about you. I want you to be happy. I really do. Because if more people were happy, I think we'd have a lot less stress and a lot less problems in the world. Happiness is a big issue. So with that, I love you guys. And I will see you on the next one.